God, but to witness and bless the joining together of this man and this woman in holy matrimony. The bond and covenant of marriage was established by God in creation, and our Lord Jesus Christ adorned this manner of life by his presence and first miracle at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. Marriage signifies to us the mystery of the union between Christ and his church, and Holy Scripture commends it to be honored among all people. The union of husband and wife and heart body and mind is intended by God for their mutual joy, for the help and comfort given one another in prosperity and adversity, and when it is God's will for the procreation of children and their nurture in the knowledge and the love of the Lord. Therefore, marriage is not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, deliberately, and in accordance with the purposes for which marriage was established by God. Into this holy union, Reagan, Rebecca, Roy, and Jared Young now come to be joined. If any of you know just cause why they may not lawfully be married, speak now, or else forever hold your peace. I require and charge you both here in the presence of God and these witnesses that if either of you know any reason why you may not be united in marriage lawfully, and in accordance with God's word, you do not confess it. Lady, do you have this man to be your husband, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Do you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? Jared, do you have this woman to be your wife? To live together in the covenant of marriage. Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I will. Will all of you witnessing these promises do all in your power to support this couple in their marriage? We will. We will. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother now. Lord be with you, and also with you, let us pray. Gracious and ever-living God, you have created us male and female in your image. Look mercifully upon this man and woman who come to you seeking your blessing. Assist them with your grace, that with true fidelity and steadfast love they may honor and keep the promises and vows that they make. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The guests are invited to please be seated for the reading of God's word. A reading from the book of Tobit, chapter 8, beginning with verse number 5. Blessed are you, O God of our ancestors, and blessed is your name in all generations forever. For the heavens and the whole creation bless you forever. You made Adam, and for him you made his wife Eve as a helper and a support. From the two of them, the human race has sprung. You said, it is not good that a man should be alone. Let us make a helper for him like himself. I am now taking this kinswoman of mine with sincerity and love. Grant that she and I may find mercy and that we might grow old together. And they said together, Amen, Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from the first letter of John, chapter 4, beginning with verse number 7. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. 
God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Reading from the gospel of St. John, chapter 15, beginning with verse number 9. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you to do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. What a beautiful evening. We're so grateful also that y'all decided to have a wedding here at the end of September so it would be so much cooler than it would have been in July. What a blessing. What a special night for all of us. I think it's, it's difficult when we think about relationships and we think about marriage to not think of love. Most of the time, the postcards and the sitcoms and the films about love really do talk about this, this amazing extravaganza of experience. And you see these descriptions of things that we do together that sort of build love. And it's, it's lovely and sweet and very sentimental. But Jesus once spoke of the kind of love that you're to have in your life. And he used an analogy. And the analogy was about building a house. And he said there was once this, this person who was out to build a house. And they got all the materials together and they started working and they built it up. And they built that on sand and weather came and the winds rose up and the rain fell down like nothing and it worked that house over and the house fell. There was another man who went to the same place, got the same materials, did the same kind of work that he built that house on the rock. And the weather came and the rain came and the wind came and it just drilled on that house, but the house stood didn't fall, it endured stronger than ever. In many ways, when we think about the life that's in front of you all, our prayer is that you will have the kind of love that would build your house on the rock. There's lots of kinds of love. There's lots of things that we say we do love. In my family, my children would tell you they love our kittens, which is great. We love those kittens. But the love that we have for our kittens isn't necessarily going to endure when the weather comes bad at us in this life. That for marriage to be able to really be strong and endure with the kind of love that God would have for it, we need a foundation that's more solid than that. In both the reading that y'all selected from 1 John and in the reading that you selected from the Gospel, the word that's used there is the word about God. God is a certain kind of love. It's not sentimental. It's a selfless, sacrificial, how can I help you? What can I do for you?
model of love to say it's not about me, it's about you. I'm here for you. How can I help you? I'm serving you. That's the love that will endure because the weather will come. It comes for every marriage. You never know where it's going to come from. Sometimes you see it coming, the clouds are coming up, the, there's a nor'easter coming. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you come around the corner and there's a wall. And all you can do is hope that you are as prepared as you can be for that moment. And that's about the foundation. We believe that your foundation is strong. We believe that you have the kind of relationship that can endure and grow stronger still over the years. That's our hope for y'all. That's our prayer for y'all. So we ask God's blessing today on Raven and Jared as we stand together in hopes that their love will be back built on. Solid rock, now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Ready to hear? Let's do it. <laughs> In the name of God, I, Jared, I, Jared take, you Reagan, take you, Reagan, to be my wife, to, be my wife, to, have, and to, hold, to have and to hold from this day forward, from this day forward for better for worse, for, better for, worse, for, richer, for, poor, for richer for poor, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health to, love and to, cherish, to love and to cherish until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This, is my solemn vow. this is my solemn vow. Stay forward for better for worse, for, for, worse, for, richer, for, poor, for richer for poorer, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health to, love and to, cherish, to love and to cherish until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. Reagan, I give you this ring as a symbol of my vow. With all that I am and all that I have, I honor you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. symbol of my vow with all that I am and all that I have I honor you in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit now that Reagan and Jared have given themselves to one another by solemn vows with the joining of hands and the giving and receiving of rings, I pronounce that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Those whom God has joined together, 
let no one put asunder. Amen. Amen. Congregation, please stand for the prayers. Let us pray together in the words that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, creator and preserver of all life, author of salvation, giver of all grace, look with favor upon the world you made, the world for which your son gave his life, and especially upon Reagan and Jerry, whom you made one flesh and holy matrimony. Amen. Give them wisdom and devotion in the ordering of their life, that each might be to the other a strength in need, a counselor in perplexity, a comfort in sorrow, and a companion in joy. Amen. Grant that their wills may be so knit together in your will, and their spirits in your Holy Spirit, that they might grow in love and peace with you and one another all the days of their life. Amen. Give them grace when they hurt one another, to recognize and acknowledge their fault, and to seek each other's forgiveness and yours. Amen. Make their life together a sign of the love of Christ to this sinful, broken world, that unity might overcome estrangement, forgiveness heal guilt, and joy conquer despair. Amen. Bestow upon them, if it is your will, the gift and heritage of children, and the grace to bring them up to know you, to love you, and to serve you. Amen. Give them such fulfillment of their affection that they might reach out in love and concern for other people. Amen. Grant that all married persons witnessing these vows may find their lives strengthened and their loyalties confirmed. Amen. Grant that the bonds of our common life as people by which all your children are united one to another, the living to the dead, may be so transformed by your grace that your will may be done on earth as it is in heaven, where, O oh Father, with your Son and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign in perfect unity, now and forever. Most gracious God, we give you thanks for your tender love in sending Jesus Christ to come among us to be born of a human mother and to make the way of the cross to be the way of life. We thank you also, Lord, for consecrating the union of man and woman in his name. By the power of the Holy Spirit, pour upon the abundance of your blessing upon this man and this woman. Defend them from every enemy. Lead them into all peace. Let their love for each other be a seal upon their hearts, a mantle about their shoulders, a crown upon their foreheads. Bless them in their work and in their companionship, in their sleeping and in their waking, in their joys and in their sorrows, in their life and in their death. Finally, in your mercy, bring them to that table where your saints feast forever in your heavenly home. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully with his favor look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace that you might faithfully live together in this life and in the age to come that you might have life everlasting. Amen. Please stand and turn to face your guests. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce you all to Mr. and Mrs. Jerry Young. Jerry, you may kiss the bride. <laughs>
and gentlemen, if I can have your attention, please welcome everyone to Willowbrook Country Club for this very special occasion. My name is Casey Brown. I'm your DJ and your MC tonight. Looking forward to having an awesome time and celebrating with you tonight. Right now, we're going to get this party started. It is my pleasure to introduce some very special people. If you would please direct your attention to my left, to the doorway, and let's welcome our matron of honor, Taylor Pascal, and the best man, Dr. Derek Stratton. Come on, big round of applause! Give it up! Now, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, everyone, let's make a whole lot of noise and welcome Mr. and Mrs. Jared Young! Jared and Reagan are so happy to have all of you here with us tonight. Right now they're going to do something special. They're going to share their first dance together as husband and wife. Everyone, please put your hands together and welcome them to the dance floor for their first dance. They've selected a very special song by Band of Horses. This is No One's Gonna Love You.
Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Jared and Reagan Young. Now Reagan would like to share a special dance with her father. Let's welcome them to the dance floor, please. For Reagan and her father, this is a special song by Ben Folds. It's called Gracie. Put your hands together for father and daughter. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Reagan would like to share a special dance with her nephew, Connor. Let's welcome them to the dance floor. This is Phil Collins, You'll Be In My Heart. applause for Reagan and Connor. Yeah. 
All right, once again, my name is Casey. If anyone has any music requests throughout the night, please come talk to me. Let me know what you want to dance to. We're looking forward to having an awesome time with you tonight. And the good news right now is dinner will be served in just a few moments, so please stay seated at your tables. Thank you.
see a lot of good moves out here on the dance floor. Let's keep it going. Let me know which one to dance to. This is September, Earth, Wind, and Fire. I play this song more often in September. I don't know why.
Father Billy. So everyone grab your drinks. see them when nobody's looking and uh, so happy I, uh, I definitely think that they're gonna have a wonderful future together and I'm just excited that we were able to be here and be part of it because uh, sometimes distance and time separates friends and even though I don't see him as often as I would like to he's still definitely my best friend and if I ever needed something I know that he and, and now his wife Reagan would be there for me and I just can't wait to see where the future takes both of them. And uh, it's not really about finding somebody that you can live with, it's about finding somebody that you can't live without. And uh, I really feel like you two make each other better from what we've seen recently. And as good doggy parents as you are. <laughs> I have a one and a three year old, so I hope you guys don't wait too long so we can uh, do similar events together. But if not, it's just been great to see y'all with Connor and with everybody in your families. And, get to see people I've seen for a long time and get to see new people that I hope I see for a long time. And uh, I'd like to raise my class to the happiest people I know and uh, I hope it always is, uh, it is something that I can be part of. And thank you for having me here. She can do one. Yes. yes. I wasn't planning on it, but the I moment. I'm not going to say anything embarrassing, so I'm Taylor, um, I'm Reagan's major of honor, I'm super honored to be here, I've known her for 27 years, that makes us sound old, um, 
we met on the first day of kindergarten in the sandbox. I know that we really did. Um, so since we were five years old, we've been through a lot together. Um, we could write a book, and I won't, I won't go into detail, but if y'all know Reagan and I, then you probably know the craziness we got into. Well, that Reagan got into. I was, the, I, was, I was the more sensible one. She was the crazy one. I apologize to Jason and Ashley and our parents. Um, but yeah, she's the sister that, well, I had a sister, but you were the sister that we always had a great time and we were fun and we annoyed the craziness out of my sister and our, your brother. Um, so yeah, I could write a book and Anyway, um, I'm super honored to be here and be your matron of honor. And um, yeah, cheers to love and happiness and the perfect balance because I remember when Brooks and I went out to dinner with you guys, I said to Jared, I said, are you sure? Do you know what you're getting yourself into? But quickly I, I realized that they were the perfect balance to each other. So um, yes, I love you guys. and. Thank you for letting me be part of, be a part of your special day, and cheers to forever.
I would then go to work at Eastman. After I would go to work, I would go by Good Shepherd and visit Christy and made sure that she was doing better, then straight to Shepherd again. I did this for three or four days until Chris was able to come and visit me with Reagan. Reagan was on times at 100% oxygen. They were aggressive with her and weaned her off as much as they could, for they feared that at that high percentage of oxygen, it would hurt her eyesight. When time came for her mom and I to take her home, it was a godsend, for she was going home to be greeted by both sets of grandparents and her big three-year-old brother, Jason, who was so excited and happy that he had a sister. But I must say, it wasn't like that all the time growing up, for she pestered the hell out of him. But it was out of love. Raven's mother and I always hoped that she could teach, that we could teach our daughter to love others, to be kind and compassionate and thoughtful. Boy, did we have our work cut out for us. We are, we are beyond proud of the woman she is today. While she was an amazing little girl, as a woman, she is a force of nature. And we are so happy that she was able to find love. For as long as we both can remember, Reagan's mom and I always knew that she was destined for great things. She is a smart girl, talented, focused, very athletic and hardworking. But happiness, that is not something that can be easily guaranteed. Reagan was always accomplishing amazing things, even as a young girl. But that was not everything for her mother and myself, as we also wanted her to be happy. That was the most important thing to us, that our daughter would find happiness in life. Because success without happiness does not mean very much. When, Mary, when Reagan met Jared, happiness started to seep into her life. It was like she was seeing everything in bright colors. She smiled more, and we knew how much this guy meant to her. To find happiness can be very difficult, and her mother and I are both very grateful and happy that these two were able to find each other. I remember Jared as a standout basketball player and track star, much like my son was at Spring Hill. He had long golden locks of hair that flowed as he sprinted down the court and around the track. <laughs> and around the track. Little did I know, I was watching my future son-in-law. <laughs> he, was, he was always reserved. He was always reserved and quiet. Quite the opposite of Reagan. And accomplished great things with a little fanfare. But talking to his basketball coach, I was told he was a quiet leader whom others respected, whether he knew it or not. When you're a parent, you always want the best for your child. My daughter was no different. So, I, so it should come as no surprise now that I'm thrilled that she has met the person of her dreams, someone who is her, is her equal, her other half, and a wonderful person. Jared, I welcome you to, into my family, and I know that the two of you will keep each other happy. Now, our family is kind of close to it and a little dysfunctional for sure. <laughs> our family tree has some nuts on it. I won't say who, but I have to say that Jared fit right in. Thank you. <laughs> that Jared fit right in with us from the moment we met him. I'm glad to say that we did not scare him away. He is still here, and now he is family. While this special day has surely meant the world to Reagan and Jared, it has a lot of significance for me too. It is a day that I have always looked forward to with anticipation and excitement. Today the world has changed a bit, and while we still decide to keep some of the old traditions, they do not carry the same meaning that they used to. Take, for instance, walking my daughter down the aisle. It is something that I was honored to do, but at the same time I did not see it as giving away my daughter to the man that she would marry. 
but I did see it as a special moment between the two of us. You see, kids grow up faster than you realize. From the moment they are born to the minute they start walking, things do not slow down from there. They grow up right before your eyes. For a short while, my daughter relied on me to carry her and hold her hand. And then one day you find out they do not need you as much as they, need, as they used to. Sure, sometimes you feel a little sad about it, but at the end of the day, it's a wonderful thing to have an independent daughter or son that does not need your help every step of the way anymore. Because then you know that you raised him right. I know that I prepared my daughter for adulthood, and yet I'm still her father. No matter how old she gets, I will always be there for her when she needs me. So walking her down the aisle was a chance for us to reconnect once more. A girl and her father, as she is about to marry the man she loves. Reagan and Jared, I know I do not need to tell you to take care of each other. I know you both will, to the best of your abilities. I can only wish you many happy years together. When you are a parent, the greatest thing that you will ever have in your life is your children. I always wanted my daughter to be the happiest that she could be. Uh, I thought that I knew the happiest version of her, but I never heard, saw her at her happiest until she met Jared. I would like to take this time to thank my daughter Reagan for the 30 years of pure joy that you gave me and your mother. I don't count the first two years because there's nothing fun about changing a dirty diaper every hour. <laughs> so I make this toast to Reagan and Jared. May God bless you. May God bless our family and our friends. Thank you for being here and witnessing this grateful, grateful event and the start of a new family for every young.
car, spend a lot of money on my brand new guitar. Baby's got a habit, diamond rings and Fendi sports bras. Riding down Mobile with my Maserati sports car. Because it's not, it's not like the thinner people. 